I have received a letter from the Honourable Member for Ballarat proposing that a definite matter of public importance be submitted to the House for discussion, namely the government's unrelenting attack on Medicare and the damage it is inflicting on Australians. I call upon those honourable members who approve of the proposed discussion to rise in their places. And I call the honourable member for Ballarat. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. And we saw it again on display in this question time. We know that the, what the Prime Minister really thinks about this GP tax and what his plans really are for Medicare. He said that he's committed to it. The new Minister for Health committed to a value signal, a price signal on Medicare. The Prime Minister remains committed to the destruction of Medicare. Over the past 18 months, he's committed to his GP tax at least 53 times, defended it as good and decent policy and necessary for saving the health of this nation. So the weasel words we're starting to hear from this Prime Minister that he's using today to say he's shelved his GP tax today have, of course, only one aim in mind, and that is about keeping his leadership in life support. Be in no doubt, be in no doubt, the only reason the only reason this Prime Minister is not proceeding with the $5 GP tax is not because he cares about Medicare, not because he cares about the health of this nation. It's because he cares about the health of his numbers in the next Liberal Party room split. That is what this is all about. Be in no doubt. This government is not standing up for Medicare. It is not abolishing the GP tax because it believes that it is, uh, it is the right thing to do by patient. It is doing so because there is no way that Labor would allow this destruction of Medicare to get through the Senate, so it knows it can't get the policy through. And it has been at war with doctor organisations, with patient groups across the country, and that remains so today. The government and those backbenchers who are going back to their electorates today are kidding themselves. What has happened today is the health minister got rolled. The health minister got rolled in cabinet, got rolled, and has been unable, unable to actually deliver to the doctors at all. She got rolled and was not able to deliver to the doctors. Has had to ring them and say, "I'm sorry, I'm sorry. The cabinet didn't actually do what I wanted." That's what she's had to do today, which shows just how ineffective this health minister is in standing up against the Prime Minister, whose agenda is to actually get rid of Medicare, a universal health insurance scheme in which we all pay into according to our means and draw down on according to our health care needs. If this minister thinks that she is going to be able to keep bulk billing rates at the rate they are currently, with the policy she has just announced, a $1.3 billion continued cut to, uh, to, the, to primary care, if she thinks bulk billing rates are going to stay exactly the same and that it is going to be a system where people who are vulnerable, people who are vulnerable, not just concession card holders, because there are people who fall a dollar short for becoming eligible for concession cards, who have chronic disease conditions, who are trying to keep in marginal jobs, trying to keep an income in, who will be affected by the policy this government has announced. If you think bulk billing rates are going to stay at 82.3 per cent, and bulk billing is important on making sure we constrain costs in Medicare, then you are kidding yourself. The Prime Minister, when he was Health Minister, presided under a collapse in bulk billing rates. The only reason, the only reason the Prime Minister had to then, as a Health Minister, do something about it was because Labor ran a very strong and effective campaign and he was forced to do so. The then Prime Minister, John Howard, came in and put in place bulk billing incentives. Now, we are going to see again under this government's policies a collapse in bulk billing, and it is happening already today. GP surgeries across the country, and I've visited many, many, many of them, are already today changing their billing practices, not just for general patients, but for concessional patients as well. They're saying the government has sent them a very clear signal, a very clear signal that it does not value general practice. It does not value our primary care system, because if it valued our primary care system, it would not have tried to cut 
$3.5 billion out of it and to transfer every one of those costs onto patients. Now, the only reason, the only reason the government has been forced to back down on one element of its GP tax is because Labor has stood up against it and because the Prime Minister is trying to salvage his job. He knows this policy does not have popular support, it does not have doctors' support, and it now does not have the support of his backbench because they have realised the damage it is doing, the damage it has been doing in their electorates to their own jobs and to their own votes, and the damage it will do to their health care system does not seem to have entered this government's mind one iota. What we've seen from this government is several iterations of this GP tax. First, we had the $7 GP tax. Then we had the policy that would have seen $20 ripped off doctors and passed on to patients, a $20 GP tax. Then we've had the $5 GP tax and the four-year freeze to indexation, which the government now is continuing. This is cuts to Medicare by stealth now. The government is, is presiding over the destruction of our universal health insurance scheme and be in no doubt today that absolutely continues. The Prime Minister on no less than 53 occasions said he thinks this is an absolute priority for health policy. In fact, this was the only health policy the government has. Yep. Now, I admit, you know, the new health minister has only been in this job for what is it, six weeks now, I think, or a little bit more than that. A little bit more than that, brought in to try and salvage a bit of a bit of a mess that's occurred. And I get that she's new to health policy, and I get that suddenly she's finding herself in a space that is really complex. But they had six years in opposition, six years in opposition, come to government, come to government with no plan for health policy. How embarrassing! After 18 months in government, you've now got a government saying, "Oh." I'm going to consult about health policy. What were you doing in opposition for six years? What were you doing and what have you been doing the last 18 months in government? In 18 months in government, at war with doctors, absolutely trying to smash Medicare, they continue to do that, not understanding the complexities of what they've done. And let's have a look at what they've done across the entire health system. Major cuts. $57 billion to cuts to public hospitals that are already starting to hit in every public hospital in this country. Over $300 million out of preventative health, over $600 million out of dental health. And then there is the attack on the pharmaceutical benefit scheme, transferring costs onto patients by increasing the PBS co-payment. That again is something we are standing against in the Senate. What you have seen from this government is an attack across the entire health system. They have targeted $3.5 billion worth of cuts to primary care, to general practice, but they've also cut billions of dollars across health. Now sitting on the table, they've got to find $800 million, $800 million which they're now going to have to find. There's speculation in the newspapers today that they will be finding that out of the public hospital system. $800 million and a $1.3 billion cut still sitting there on the table. Be in no doubt what this is about today, what this actually is about today, is the Prime Minister trying to actually shore up his job. The Prime Minister trying to shore up his job, but not anything about the health of this nation. We know that he said on several occasions, 53 of them, that uh, this toxic GP tax is good policy. And again, the Health Minister today has said the GP tax is good health policy. Be in no doubt. They don't actually want to change this GP tax, and the only reason they are here today, if they could have got this through the Senate, if they could have got this through the Senate, it would be in place today. There be in no doubt, this is exactly what this government wanted to do. Now, what we do know that is this, uh, this government has not learnt, has not learnt a single thing from its attacks on primary care. They still believe that the GP tax, a value signal, the ridiculous statement the uh, Minister for Health is now calling it a value system. Well, I can tell you this much. You don't value general practice by cutting $3.5 billion out of it. What sort of value signal do you think that sends to every single GP in the nation? And I'm sure you've been hearing it 
every time you sit down in a GP surgery uh, across the country and in many of those small kitchens in GP surgeries where they'll be telling you pretty loud and clear that they have never been so angry at a government policy and never so angry at a government. Now, what we've seen is that the GP tax has been wrong. Why has it taken until today for the government to actually acknowledge it? We've had you know, is it eight months, ten months since the actual budget. They've taken this long because this is all about the Prime Minister's job. And be in no doubt, when the New South Wales election's over and the heat's off them in New South Wales, when the Prime Minister you know, maybe, maybe has managed to shore up some of his numbers here in this, uh, uh, in this place, maybe he has, maybe he hasn't, he will do this again. Yes, there is no right. doubt. This attack on Medicare is in the DNA of the Liberal National Order. Party, and they Order. should own it every single day.